And now for something completely different. All right, Metalomaniacs, right now I'm very, very excited to be joined by my new pal Dominic out of Germany, as a matter of fact, man, with Psychor, which, dude, I'm loving, I'm loving what you guys are doing, man. I'm a big fan of your work and I appreciate your time. How are you doing today, sir? Thank you so much. I'm doing fine. A bit tired awesome. because uh, nights are short, but um, yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. All right. Oh, yeah. The nights are getting shorter. As our summer days come creeping in, man, the nights grow shorter. And I, you know, if you're a night owl like me, you, you need some of them dark hours. So I am, but uh, <laughs> we're still kind of locked down in Germany. So it's not uh, as, uh, as short nights as uh, probably in, in the U.S., but uh, we're right. getting there. Right, yeah. Hopefully that ends soon. Well, I'll tell you what, I've stayed on lockdown, but you've been a big portion of my soundtrack for it here as of late, man. I've been really digging into the fucking, into the discography here because I knew I had the opportunity to talk to you and I was very excited about it. So, dude, badassery, my friend. I'm digging it. Thank you. Thank you so much. We Let try our best. Let's take it from the top, man. First of all, uh, first of all, obviously, your name is Dominic. Who are the other uh, people that make up your project here? Um, as of right now, we're just two guys. It's uh, Niels, who's, who plays the guitar, is the pale guy. Um, he's he's the last founding member, and myself. <laughs> <clears throat> the pale guy. Hey, I like it. They yeah. used to call me the fat guy around here, so the pale guy. I don't know if you've seen a video. He's he's always uh, like super uh, pale. He, he paints his face white and has like black contents. And, yeah, right on. It's, that's probably the best way to describe him so you know who he is yeah we're just uh, two people right now in the band we uh, split ways with our guitarist jay last year and before that our drummer tobias who uh, departed i think it was in 2018 um yeah so we just we just uh get some session musicians to play shows and uh, do everything behind the scenes uh just for the two of us so yeah Right on, right on. Well, We're basically I, a duo right now. <laughs> hey, I like it, man. Whatever it is, it's working, brother. So how did you two, I guess, especially since you two are the still together with the band, how did you two come together and create this vision? Because it's quite, it's large, man. You're, the vision for this is large. It's epic. It's big. You know, it's got a, a scope to it that I'm impressed by. So tell me a little bit about that. Uh, it's it's basically a lot of loose ends that just happened to uh, connect to to Core. I I uh, applied for the band in 2014 when their original singer left, and uh, I was taken. And uh, I I basically cramped down on that and made it my own. So uh, I, I, he didn't know me at first. We just uh, connected throughout the band. Uh, so it's it's not like him finding me rather than me finding them and applying. And uh, it's been great ever since. And they had the band going on for i think it was five years prior to me joining so um it was all there basically when i joined i, I just added brought another character yeah <laughs> well not not the character i i uh i joined to be the commander which is a uh, which is the vocalist's uh you know like stage persona right. um right and i i gave it my own personal touch i think i became the commander <laughs> well you are what i know of cybercore now so you are the commander to me sir so well i'll take it <laughs> i'll take it well give give our metalomaniacs a little bit of background actually on that for those who are not familiar already with with your approach you do have a, a very um elaborate stage presence and an approach to how you deliver your music and stuff man tell, tell everybody a little bit about that sir well, let's, I'll try to break it down uh, and keep it as short and simple as possible. Basically, it's a um, it's a sci-fi concept that we developed to uh, portray a message that we have that our um, music is supposed to, you know, back, um, which is a post World War Three scenario where uh, most of the Earth's surface is contaminated with, uh, you know, radiation because of the fallout and stuff as a result of man-made war and uh, most of the po population has been wiped out in the process and um, there's just a couple of uh, sparse groups that are fighting for you know scratches uh, which is us and uh, yeah right there you go it's it's just a clever way of saying you know if we continue down this path that we are on as a society this is what we might end up having right so yeah a very dystopian view of the future, you might say, right? Yeah. And Not a friendly one, but, you know, if we don't get our shit together, we might get there. Right. One easy to see and coming to reality, for sure. So Yeah. 
<laughs> I hope not, but could happen. Uh, right. Well, and dude, I've listened to the Alliance all day today, as a matter of fact, and it's just ridiculously. It's the, it's reeks of talent. It reeks of vision. And, uh, you know, we do have you, of course, here on our sci-fi special. That's not by accident. You guys have a very cool sci-fi approach, as you said, a, a dystopian approach, you know. Was that the vision right from inception from this band? I know you came into 2014, so was it an elaborately, you know, set up already? I, I, it kind of give me how that's come to full fruition. Um, the guys have always been, like, huge sci-fi nerds. Like, uh, everybody in the band has enjoyed, like... Uh, you know, Fear Factory's music or movies like Star Wars, Star Trek, those franchises, uh, The Terminator, Mad Max, stuff like that. And um, at some point as a band, you just need that extra little oomph, you know, to, to stand out. And um, I think it was Niels who actually designed one of our stage uh, costumes, the hazmat suits that are supposed to protect us from radiation, which is how they fit into, you know, the whole scenery. And we were always influenced by uh, very, you know, uh, scenic bands like you know behemoth or, or slipknot that have this whole package and we always wanted that for us so um we came up with the backstory and it kind of unfolded from there um and it's all you know just taken from inspiration out of sci-fi movies and bands we like to and, and uh, yeah yeah well and now it's become really i mean there's three four full lengths right four full length albums that yeah that tell the story that you know the most recent being the alliance if i'm not mistaken which is awesome by the way but <laughs> thanks but yeah i mean I, honestly i've said it, i'm a guy that grew up in the kiss generation you know i'm an old cat so i grew up back where you know a, a very elaborate stage presence was almost something you grew to expect for especially in our genre you know something that of the harder edge of the harder ilk and a lot of that's gone away so Nowadays, I appreciate it when it's done well, which you guys have done, man. I gotta give, oh, I gotta tip you. my hat to that, sir. Some people it's... might accuse every now and again of this kind of thing. You know, if you're replacing the music with it, that's a different thing. But if it's an enhancement, wow, spectacular! And that's what we aim for. It's it's uh, it's kind of a double-edged sword. You know, you get judged pretty quickly, especially when you have like those goofy self-made outfits and you walk up on a stage at like. 2 p.m. and everybody can see you in broad daylight and you know sees the things self-made and then but then you play like a killer show and everybody's like all right all right these people they aren't fucking around it's not you know as you said it's a substitute not you know some no no it's an enhancement not a substitute that's what right I'm saying. that is so so accurate man because it delivers it belts you know it's got uh it brings everything it's got great solos work it's got you know raw talent comes reeking out of it which is you know separates it as well as the stage presence and everything so that's great i love to hear that very very because cool. um we uh we try to keep it simple but at the same time not too simple you know every it's not like we are you know reinventing the genre or anything but um uh i think our music has its own unique spin to it and uh it seems to work for people some people quite enjoy it and uh makes me feel very good well that. But where are you now, I guess, as as we do seem to be emerging from our cocoon, finally, if you will, or, or you know, where where is Sidecore now? Where does the band stand with what you, what comes next for you guys? Um, we've basically written, as all bands have probably done in the time where you couldn't tour. We actually had a tour scheduled for last year, I think, which we had to postpone, I think, twice now. Yeah, I think we, we moved it from 19 to no, from 20 to 21 and now from 21 to 22. Um, it's been it's been pretty brutal, actually. Um, yeah, it's okay. just, you know, we're just just two guys and we had a bit of a rough uh, time. Um, lots of changes in the private lives, you know, relationships coming to an end and stuff like that. So we've been uh, we've been pretty struck by tragedy and locked in our rooms in, in darkness. But um, we're slowly getting out there. We uh, we have. Uh, written and recorded a couple of new tracks and we'll see how and when we'll release those and then hopefully get the tour rolling and then take it from there and i mean you can't stop the core <laughs> that's right brother that's right you cannot my friend and hey from your lips to the metal god's ears let's not let's you know let's keep it going brother <laughs> yeah we will we um we're very close to releasing uh, a new track actually um we just need to uh fix the final video shot and then we can it's kind of hard in germany to make a video right now because you have these uh 
social what are they called social distancing guidelines that you have to keep uh, and then you cannot shoot like a big ass video which we like to do yeah um, the videos just, are awesome i love the videos thanks man thanks yeah. we put a lot of time and effort in those um <laughs> but you, you just cannot do that right now so this is holding us back a bit um but it's yeah it's, it's getting there oh we're almost there hopefully again the, the new stuff is great is a- by the way i'm not i'm not one to brag but I fucking love our new music and I hope people will enjoy it. It's a little more on the uh, experimental side of things. We have, uh, we have a lot more of uh, electronics and uh, some weird melodies and stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how people will dig that, if they will dig that. <laughs> oh, hey, well, I'm looking forward to checking it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, let me ask you that. As a band that has a dystopian kind of view and a dysto- you know, an approach to, the, to your lyrical content, how has that been to take in a real world dystopian story over the last year and a half here? I mean, not so much fun, actually. Yeah, it's, it's, right. It's, uh, been... <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not been fun. It's yeah. actually quite uh, menacing to see what people turn into when they are, you know, confronted with such circumstances. Same um, thing. A reminder for all animals at the end, huh? Well, not not exactly. I'm a very obedient person. You know, somebody tells me to not do shit, I won't. Um, but I've had several arguments with people that I deemed, you know, very smart that have actually seemed to become very dumb over that past year. But yeah, me too. Me too. As bro. it's slowly coming, you know, to fade, it's 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 getting more bearable for me. But uh, I was I was very mad at the time. I was very mad. I tried to keep to myself and uh, you know be a good boy, but uh, it was made very hard for myself sometimes. Yeah, the, the the general lowered IQ of the of the public is definitely a, a a hindrance. I didn't realize quite how bad it would be until we faced a, a problem, you know, globally together. Man, holy shit! <laughs> Maybe there, I'm sure there's a lot of how much of that comes creeping into your next project. I I guess oh, probably <laughs> a lot. I mean, I it's, gotta it's, imagine. It's, I wrote two. No, I think I wrote three songs specifically when I was very mad at a general discussion with you know mask laws in Germany, and I was so pissed and and I just vented basically, and the, and they turned out pretty aggressive. But also, I think you know when I write lyrics, it's not like I want to write about one specific topic and make the song about one specific topic. We are always aiming for something like universal. We are always yeah. saying something without saying what specifically we are saying right. so that people can connect to and project that onto their everyday life and yeah, their and struggles terrific. and whatnot. Yeah, um, leave, leave room for interpretation. And um, I think I did that, but it's also very obvious where I came from when I wrote those. <laughs> so yeah, um, but then again, man, I'm, I'm just glad we get this behind us and yeah. No major casualties, if you can call it that. I mean, yeah. Hey, me- metalheads have no shortage of anger as it is, and then you put all these goddamn roadblocks in front of us, boy, and let and then watch us blow shit up. You know, that is very true. So, which is I've why I've been a very short fused person. <laughs> yeah, you and me both, brother. It's gotten me in trouble more than it's helped me. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Is that where the jaw came from? Yeah. Uh, well, honestly, probably. <laughs> if if you broke it down, I'm sure there's something I did in the past that got it broken then, and you know, I'm probably suffering for it now. Shit. If there's anything I can tell you, man, is that you suffer later more for the shit you did when you're young. That's a promise. So I can, something to look I can forward relate. to. Something to look forward to. I'm looking forward to that album. So. Well. <laughs> I hope you'll dig it. Yeah, fuck yeah. That's we're not sure. We're not sure yet if we uh, if we're gonna release an album or if it's an EP or whatever. We'd, we're not sure yet. Um, it all comes down to to timing, basically. I mean, we have a couple songs ready, um, and we are going to release something, but we don't know what we are going to release yet because every band has been, you know, holding back and pulling back, and those that have released have basically, you know regret it and um right. we just we just want to be very careful because we're not a signed band we are doing everything on ourselves right. um another day yeah, on... hey, ta- hats off to that though i respect respect thanks but um we have to be extra careful i mean i have basically burnt my whole private money to keep this band alive as has neil so uh it's, it's tough times and you have to be very cautious what to do because if you one wrong move could basically mean the end yes. and, uh, we, we try to avoid that so that's always something that I hope people keep in mind when they say, oh, South Korea's not made a record in three years. What the fuck are these guys doing? I mean, yeah, we, we, basically we are trying to survive. Yeah, brother, man. Good Lord. <laughs> I, I think you just nailed it on the head right there, man. We're all trying to survive, man. We're all, that is very true. You know, and, and I come out here every week 
hoping that these goofy dick jokes and fucking metal songs that we play for everybody is some kind of helping and fucking doing exactly that surviving man you i'm know? pretty sure they are i mean uh, come on you can never go wrong with dick jokes and yeah you really can man you know dick jokes and metal brother that's a recipe for fucking survival that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hey, and you helped me get through, brother, man. You know, the bands that we listen to, I, I, I know I say it probably too much on the show at this point, but I think it's that important that it should be said over and over again. The metal music that we listen to, this, there's a reason metalheads don't listen to pop, that we don't listen to, the, you know, the realism, the grittiness of it, the fucking rawness of it, the anger of it. Let's be honest, the anger of it itself. Is very attractive. Like you said, we were, you know, I think there's more than a few metalheads that share that short fuse syndrome. If you ask, you know, if you did a poll, I'll bet. Probably. And, uh, but, but it's something real about it, man. And that's, I think, why we embrace the music the way that we do and the why that we go down the road screaming Cypcore and Slayer. And you know what I mean? It's the, it's more than music for that reason, I think, it, because it does help you get through. It does help you fucking survive this shit fucking planet, you know? Yeah, for sure. And you always get that <laughs> sense of connection with, other people that feel the same way which is the big one for me because i was always you know i was not one of the popular kids i always had you know like the long hair and then the black shady shirts and whatever right. i was kind of an outcast and um uh, and just the metal community in general just welcomed me and hey. there's just no double standard somebody you get a disagreement if you like this band you like that band whatever but it's just a big community and uh it's a very welcoming one which is rare for sure nowadays. The metal community, I've said it for years, it's the world's largest island of misfit toys, man. You know, <laughs> we're, we're all in it together and we knew it, though. We knew it. That was, you know, as much as the music drew me to that, it was that part of it. You know, it was the kindred. You know, I was also an outcast. I was a wild dude. You know, I was always the crazy kid or whatever. But I was drawn to metalheads and they were drawn to me. They accepted me for who I was right from the jump. And that's always been my community i guess there sure. you know that's led to me doing the show today even as i mean that is what it meant to me you know so there's something more home. here yeah brother yeah for sure and taking that from us you know i can't i don't know when your last show was but i have not seen or played a show in at least i think it was two years i think the last show oh. i saw was Arxpire with uh Ugh. i don't remember but it was in 2019 when I last saw a show, that is fucking crazy. That is crazy. I think it was 2019 for us. We last saw, I believe, Snipers of Babel and Eyes of the Living, some some uh, you know some cool local bands and stuff that we love. And uh, I think before that, it was Judas Priest, actually. So yeah, it's, I, I'm not seeing enough shows, man. That's for sure. I mean, I need shows back. This is how, I need them. I yeah, need them. We all do. It's, it's crazy. Uh, the whole entertainment industry has just been, just been shut down. I mean, everybody I know that works in there has just basically been bleeding out for like two years now, and it's and it's a catastrophe. It because, is because uh, uh, it's not like it's a small business. You know, there's there's like a, a trillion dollar industry that's just been shut down, and it's it's crazy. Kicked completely Absolutely in the dick. Crazy. Well, and where I'm most concerned, honestly, is as we do recover, hopefully we recover. Knock on wood, but. The venues, man. The venues, the venues, the venues. I, I'm going to say it every week. I'm going to push people out there. If you have any money to open a place, man, we need the venues back. As the world returns, people are going to want to see shows. Put a shitty little fucking stage in your little shitty bar and let bar bands play there, man. You know, sure. that's the best use you can do with your stimulus money out there is open a place and get our venues going out there, ladies and gentlemen. We need our venues. Yeah, preach it. Preach it. We need that, venues. That is our, I, I believe that's been are most hatcheted as the result of covid that's where we've taken the most damage as our venues probably yeah i mean as a band you can just dial it back and just wait but yeah the venue has to pay rent and uh right i mean we have to pay rent for our studio but that's not the point we do make a little money from selling merch and stuff so but well very little and consider this the music industry has changed in such that making money off the music itself these days is very difficult so you need those shows you need those merch stands you need those cds being handed to person to person at the shows to make the band that's the lifeblood of the band anymore and for those to be shut down i'm 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 so happy to hear that many of the metal musicians we talk to have taken this as an opportunity to write and be creative and to produce but it is i i'm very concerned in that man you know we're how many veins are running dry right now because they're just out of options probably a lot but i think we are going to have a flood of shows once that that floodgate opens i mean you won't be able to decide which show you're going to see oh. i think there's going to be like 15 tours that are coming through your city and you just 
have to count your pennies and see how many of them you can take. Um, uh, all, all of them, all of them, right to the face. Yeah, that's that's wishful thinking. <laughs> it's, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, I, I, I love it and I appreciate it, but I'm also concerned um, if we are not, you know, against like five other shows that day. I mean, we'll see, but... It's going to be spicy for sure. Oh, I think when shows come back, man, people are so starved for them that, you know, I believe I, I've kind of, we've made a joke around here. Even shitty bands are going to be filling venues for a while, at least, <laughs> you know, that's and, terrible. and you, that's a very terrible thing to say. <laughs> it, it is, but I mean, let's be honest, but Hey, and you are not that you are a fantastic band. So that's got legs to it. That's going to, that will surplus just the immediacy of, of the return of shows, I believe. But long term, you know, I we need that shit. The shows, I, you know, I've been advised that I have to stay out of a pit because of my jaw, Dominic. What am I supposed to do here, brother? We're well, finally getting shows back, and now my fucking jaw is going to keep me out of the pit. I'm very upset. Well, you should be, but you should all also be concerned with your health. I mean, I get it. But um, you said something very important there, long term. I think uh, that the hype of shows coming back is going to die down really quickly because of how many shows there are going to be. Um, and I think right. it's going to go back to normal fairly quickly. I, I think it's going to be half a year of mayhem and then it's just going to dial back in. Um, and in that time, that is where I and my band would probably like to, you know, be present and be powerful, have, you know, leverage and be on stage and be, you know, existence this is always a nice term in, in the music yeah. industry a band that exists is a band that is you know relevant yeah relevant relevance is a very big one um and i would love to be there when that time comes because um it's a very you know uh short-lived you know industry once your album's out everybody's talking about you two weeks later nobody knows who the fuck you are um yeah. it's, it's crazy and there's Sad, a lot true. of really 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 great bands out there that get thrown under the bus because their one record didn't, you know, get the buzz they hoped it would get. Um, you have to be like super thick skinned to survive in the game. But um, well, yeah. you have to love it, man. You have to for love sure. It, you know? And you don't get anything for free. Yeah, you always have to work your ass off. Sweat balls and nuts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth, brother. It is. Uh, but I like it. I really right. do. I, I work full time and do this uh, whole band as a, as a hobby. Um, and sometimes I sleep, so um, I never do that part. But oh, you, you, I think you're lying here. Uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I think two oh, hours a night are good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right, there you go. Yeah, that's about what I do. I do two hours at night and two hours in the middle of the day. There you go. About four hours a day. So perfect. That's yeah. uh, if that works for you, that's fine. So hey, all I'm saying is you need to you know clamp the cheeks together and just go for it. Damn right, There's brother. This one. No gifts in this one, but um, nothing was so ever earned by the meek sitting in their basement, sir. That's for sure. Nothing was ever ah. earned by by the meek who did nothing. You got to put your balls out there to get it. That is that is true. I mean, there's some wonder child that gets recognized. You know, in the MySpace days, you had that like crazy band in the in the. Do you, do you remember Tesseract? I think it was I a do. MySpace that blew up overnight because they had this crazy instrumental uh, that that got like a hundred million views in like two weeks. I, you know, I, numbers are fictitious there, but they blew up overnight from their right. basements, basically. I mean, those things happen, but you cannot rely on them. Well, see, and even that, I would make the case that they were discovered and, and made overnight, but that took a long time for that. They, that was a passion project for them for a long time before people realized it. You know, it just... Honestly, it was taken, absorbed by the public kind of all at once, which I got to imagine is disconcerting for somebody, you know, like <laughs> I, I'm nobody yesterday, today I'm everything. That's got to be crazy. But but yeah, there was sure. talent there. I mean, you know, I'm not a huge Tesseract guy myself, to be honest with you, but I see that I saw why that people were drawn to it, you know. And, and I got to believe that's something they worked at for a long time, you know. Yeah, for sure. Every overnight sensation has been 10 years in the making, they you say. You better believe it. That's right. We got to get back to the sci-fi, man. I'm talking yeah, and talking it. and rambling. Yeah, well, you know, uh, well, <laughs> on the topic of sci-fi, man, since uh, you guys, of course, we are doing our sci-fi special tonight, I got to ask you off the top of your head, what are some of the your favorite sci-fi movies of all time to you, sir? <laughs> Ooh, I did really enjoy anything time travel related. Like the, oh. the Terminator franchise is great. I fucking love Matri Matrix. Matrix is probably my favorite series. Uh, Star Wars, I'm not really a, a great Star Trek guy, but um, I understand why 
people like it. I I did watch it and enjoyed it, but I'm just a Star Wars guy. Right. Um, Mad Max is a big one if you oh, want to call love, it sci-fi. Yeah, dystopian. Um, I love it. Yeah. Hell yeah, the Riddick stuff is really cool. Oh yeah, I uh, like that too. Fallout. Um, basically anything I would say. I've I've not seen a single sci-fi franchise or movie that i didn't like some aspects of not at all yeah man well there's a reason we're doing specials about it because sci-fi and horror and stuff like that we love that kind of we're nerdy metalheads around here we do specials on comic books and shit so you know it, you just wish that there's some possibilities to, to just time travel oh. and just see what the future's like i mean who doesn't think about that sometimes crazy it's just it's just intriguing or or like what's out in space you know meeting aliens or shooting lasers or having whatever i mean it's it's just fucking it's uh, it's mesmerizing i had a friend tell me recently that the reason sci-fi is so rich in many of our lives that people love it is that there's so much we don't know that the things you can write to fill that space becomes our science fiction stories and that's endless and i thought that was a pretty fantastic description and i that's that's I'm pretty cool quite yeah. drawn to it yeah you know i've been on a science fiction kick honestly getting ready for our show tonight and been watching a lot of time travel movies i just watched predestination a great one that i recommend if you've not get, taken it in ethan hall let me write that down yes oh so good ethan oh, hall yep. predestination my friend it's so so great and there's a low budget i there's a, one of my favorite movies ever is a low budget time travel movie. The guy that's in it wrote it himself. He shoot he saved all his money and sold everything he could to put the movie together and that's called Primer. Have you ever seen that? I don't think I have. Primer Problem is um the, the movie titles get translated to German so I might have seen some ah. of, um I don't watch them in German. I actually always prefer to watch the original voice but um the titles always or sometimes get translated so I, oh, I might have seen it but I don't think I have. I'll make sure you get primer, even if I got to email you a copy. I got it on my computer because it's a it's in my opinion, it's the most well thought out time travel movie ever. And it's a shoestring budget. This guy made this thing. on. I mean, you can tell it's not it's no by no stretch of the imagination. Is it a huge budget science fiction movie? But it's so great. I like a thinking man's film. So, you know, yeah, I understand that. Yeah, Have you stuff. seen Transcendence with uh... Uh, love it? Yeah, that was great. I like that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Or Interstellar was also pretty good. Uh, you know, Interstellar's my my lovely co-host and wife, Scully. She was messed up by Interstellar for like two weeks. So yeah, I can understand that. <laughs> it, it got into her blood for a while there. So yeah, check out Predestination too with Ethan Hawk. Watch that shit today. It's that good, man. Yeah, will. I mean, it's pretty late in Germany right now, but uh, yeah. Oh yeah, right. I guess. But so. it's not that late. But yeah. you know, I got. I, I still have a little bit of uh, things to do left in my day. Uh, I, I might yeah. get to it. Right on. Are you? Are you a science science fiction TV show or a reader? Do you read? Are you a big consumer of that in those mediums? And mm, not yet, but I might. I just recently got into reading. At you know, at first, uh, I I always have like uh, problems reading german books because they are uh complicated in their writings um and i would always get uh get hung up on a phrase and and reread it and read it all, all over again until i would get it and that was uh that would kind of ruin the experience for me but um ever since i started you know buying the english copies i started reading more right now i'm i think it's called green lights by matthew mcconaughey oh, that okay. is what i'm reading right now it's fascinating book 10 of 10 recommend cool. um but no sci-fi yet uh, but uh perhaps we'll, we'll get to that yeah perhaps. man philip k <laughs> dick isaac asimov man get them all get them all uh I, I, I've, cons I've consumed <laughs> that shit all my life brother so yeah semulist i Samulist. promise i count on it i will indeed that's good shit, man. Well, Dominic, man, I appreciate it. Well, let me ask you this in closing my last question for you, if I will. What song should we play for everybody tonight from the band to give them a little... If, if they are brand new listeners to Cybercore, what do you think is the best way to punch them in the face with a good little taste? Huh. Oh, that's, that's, that's a big one. I know, I would, right? <laughs> I would probably feed them the values of death, but Ooh, there's no... Like there's no video for that, so I'll probably go with the Dream Smasher. Oh, I, I will say Dream Smasher is a personal favorite at the moment, so. 
I hate that song because it's uh, it's right at the end of my range. And when I play it live, I sometimes butcher it, which comes to haunt me. But um, uh, hey, it's a man. great song. That's part song. of the live experience, brother. You know, hey, yeah, for sure. But I, I, you know, I try to be perfect. So you can always, you know, you can't be, but I'll try to be. <laughs> hey, yeah, I gave up on I gave up on that a long time ago. What, what do they say? Never let the good be the enemy of perfect, my brother. So if if they call me good, I'll take it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> but you gotta accept that as a fact, you know. Yeah, when you're, right. when you're aiming for perfect, and then good is not exactly good enough. So yeah, oh yeah. But I, I get the I get point. It. I get the point. I get it. Oh, there. Th this is our two hundred and some twentieth episode or something, man. I still remember like in episode one thirteen, a mistake. You know, something I said wrong. So I get it. I I can relate. <laughs> I, I, <yeah. laughs> Got to let those go though. <laughs> yeah, trying, brother. Trying. That's the lesson for us all, I guess, brother. For sure. Dominic, I love you, sir. I appreciate the fuck out of you spending time with us here at Metalomania, man. I really do. I love you too, Mr. Crypt. Heal that Good jaw, man. stay out of the pit, and uh, yeah. we'll see you next time. Well, this is Dominic <laughs> from Cybercore, and you guys are watching Metalomania with the Crypt and Scully.
Yes! Yes! 